Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Amy here. Today we're going to talk about my most surprising books of 2021. So these books are basically under a genre that I don't read a lot of. Not that I don't like them, I, I'm just very particular about certain genres. Um, like just regular like women's fiction, drama, fantasy, even cozy mysteries. Uh, I used to love, love, love cozy mysteries and I do still still love them but I've gotten so much more into like mystery thriller suspenseful type of books that cozy mysteries are just something that I will go back to uh, just to just to have something different but I, I've become a little picky about what I choose to read as far as cozy mysteries so I have a little bit more than a handful of books that I'm going to talk about in today's video so first up, this is ha The Haunting of Bryn Wilder. This is by Wendy Webb. This was actually a pick um, that I chose last year for Winter Ween. Um, it was, was it for Winter Ween? Or was it maybe the the group read for Winter Ween? I don't, I don't remember. It was some sort of reading challenge um, that I read this book. Um, but I actually had it on my TBR, on my um, Amazon tablet. Because, you know, it sounded haunting and, you know, I thought it was going to be like a haunting type of ghost story. Maybe haunted house involved. I don't know. But it ended up to be more of a haunting, tragic love story, basically. So, it was, there was nothing suspicious, mysterious, thrilling really about it. It was more of... There was a little bit of mysteriousness to it because you're you're wondering like what what the point of this story is. Where are we going with 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 this story? We're following Bryn at a time in her life where she's grieving. She has just lost someone um, in her life, and she's kind of stepping away and trying to get out of her head. Um, she took some leave from her job, I believe. So she goes off on like this um, little getaway by herself to this inn. Now the inn is haunted, um, but there's a certain characters, um, mysterious type characters, and, and they, know, they know things and things are just a little weird and, and mysterious. So it does have some mis mystery there, but it's more of mysteriousness instead of like a mystery. Um, I guess it's a mystery of like what what's happening. What's happening in this little haunted inn? What does it have to do with Bryn? Um, so yeah, we follow her during this time. It was just a fascinating story and I I, I know a lot a lot of people for the readathon didn't like it, but I like truly liked it and I was surprised because it wasn't, to me, it wasn't really like a suspenseful thriller type of book. It was just, it was a love story, a tragic love story. Um, and I just thought, I thought it was a beautiful story. And it, it shocked me that, um, that I really enjoyed that type of read. So, so yeah, it, I, I think, believe I gave it four or five stars. I, I gave it four stars on my Goodreads. And I did listen to the audio. Yeah, I said the, the audio does a, a hauntingly fantastic job at, be, at bringing this book to life. It was narrated by, um, I, th I, think, I think you say Z Sands, it's X, Y, and then it's X and then an E. So Z Sands uh, is the narrator. She, just, she did a fantastic job. Her voice was so haunting and you could feel Bren's story coming to life through, through her voice. Um, if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend it. It, it was really fascinating. The same thing kind of goes with The Dream Daughter. Um, this is by Diane Chamberlain. Uh, once again, I, I wasn't sure what I was getting into. Um, one of my favorite booktubers, uh, read this book and truly loved it. So I was like, and, and you know, this booktuber and I sort of have the same likes sometimes not all the time but I was like hmm that does sound interesting it has to do with time travel and um the love how deep a love goes between a mother and a daughter or how much a mother would do to protect 
her daughter, her, her child. Um, it was again, just like a, just a beautiful love story, but between a mother and her daughter. We're traveling forward in time because the book starts off in, um, like the night, yeah, 1970. It is 1970. Um, and she she's pregnant our main character is pregnant and she is told by her doctors that her child basically will die she meets someone in, in her current times um apparently maybe from the future who tells her that there are you know technology and doctors and that can help her daughter live so she travels to the future to try to save her daughter and it's just her journey um through through different times and what happens when you can mess with time and what she will do to to sacrifice herself her life her current time for her daughter her unborn daughter there's also a little bit of a love story in here um, but it was, oh my God, I think I gave it five stars. It was, it was beautiful. Yes, I gave it five stars. <laughs> Another surprising read for me was, um, Escaping the Merman. This is by Aramis Jordan. I, it, this is a, you know, male, male romance that involves, um, a merman. So it's more on the fantasy side. So I wasn't sure how was how I was going to feel about this when the author reached out to me um, to to read the arc. Um, but I was like, yes, yes, I'll read this male male romance. I'm going to dive into something different, you know, uh, see how it goes. And I ended up loving it. I I gave this one four stars. Um, the second book. I believe it was actually my favorite out of the two. I, I gave it five stars. As I'm reading this, I like I didn't want to put it down. I wanted to find out what was going to happen. So we have like a colony of mermen, and mermen are known to be dangerous. Um, but in this book, they are known to like lure men in from their ships and seduce them or do you know like sexual things to them because the, the mermen themselves cannot experience sex um so they are cursed they were cursed years ago to like just constantly live with arousal um but they cannot you know they have no end to their release you know it's it's so so they take their ple pleasure by giving pleasure to men so this kind of takes place like back in like pirate times 1700s or something like that so yeah that along with like pirating times merman i wasn't sure how i was gonna feel about it but surprisingly i loved it um so in this book we're following the merman named arion and uh the human fernando uh fernando is the owner of the ship and they basically uh, kind of get thrown off their their line of where they were going, I think. Or there was some pirates coming after them, so they take a different route. They come among the, the Merman, the Merman colony, where the Merman lure Fernando and his mates to their sexual doom. <laughs> it's very interesting. Uh, and the, I, I loved how the uh, a relationship formed between Fernando and Arion. And, um, yeah, it was just fun. And I, I was just excited that it, it really intrigued me and I had a good time with it. So, so yeah. And the second book is even better. Another surprising read, uh, this is True Story by Kate Reed Perry. Yes. Um, uh, I gave this four stars. Um, it was very different from anything I've ever read. And I haven't heard many people talk about this book. In fact, I don't think I've heard anybody really talk about this book at all. And I felt like it needed more praise than it was getting. Um, I don't have it with me. It was a, one of my book of the month picks. Um, I, I gave, I loaned it to Debbie because I wanted her to read it and see how she felt about it. I don't really know now if it's gonna be really be her thing. But anyway, I really enjoyed it. The cover, first of all, pulled me in. And then I started reading it. And I was, and I was like even more pulled in. Because it's just, it's written out just so differently. Uh, so we follow Alex and Nick in this story. Um, there's, there's 
some timelines happening. The book starts in like 2015. Uh, Alice opens up the story. I'm kind of reading from my Goodreads because I don't, I don't really remember exactly how this, how it played out. I just remembered like how much I just, I just remember how much I really enjoyed it. So Alex talks to us like through screenplays. She is going to, to school to be like a screenwriter, but we're mainly following Nick and his his journey but you're one like you're just wondering the whole time like what do they have to do with each other and um you know what what is the point of all this and it was it, i just found it fascinating i i love the different styles of the writing and like how we were getting the story through like a screenplay and nick is basically talking to himself a lot so some chapters will just like it it'll just like cut off because he he would black out or something you would have to read the story to really understand what i'm talking about it's very hard to explain i've never read anything like this before but what it all boils down to is that something happened to alex and it involved nick's two friends even though nick had nothing to do with it he is having a hard time coping with it so he's troubled about his past and Alice is is just struggling to to cope with what happened. So yeah, so we're kind of getting you know both their their sides of the story just in different formats, and it was just it was just so interesting and so intriguing. And then we get this like just genius twist at the end. Uh, I I just had a really good time with it, and uh, it's you know it was just, it was surprising to me just because it was just different. Even though it, it, there was still like a mystery aspect to it, not necessarily a a thriller maybe a little bit suspenseful but it was just different and I really liked it then we have the lost apothecary this is by Sarah Penner uh, this is uh, more on the like fantasy side and I, I loved it I was drawn in first of all by the beautiful cover that we have for this book um, and then the story itself was just fascinating so more of a historical type of fantasy because we're going back to like 1700s and we're following Nella. She owns a, an apothecary store. Uh, we're also following a 12 year old Eliza. I had to look and see what her name was. Um, she goes to Nella to get a potion for her mistress. Um, Nella was kind of famous for being the one you go to if you want to kill your significant other, harm the significant other, put a spell on on any, you know, anyone that is you feel is doing wrong to you and you want to get back at them, you go see Nella and she will mix something up for you. But Eliza is the 12 year old, um, I guess like housemaid to, you know, this mistress and she goes to fetch the bottle of whatever it is that the mistress has you know, recommended or, or has wants from, from Nella. And Eliza and Nella sort of form like this friendship because Nella feels like Eliza should not be the one there to, to hold responsibility for what she's about to do. You know, she feels like the mis this should be the mistress that she's seeing or not, not the mistress's, mistress's housemaid. So, so she, she does her best to like teach Eliza about the potion and how harmful it is and how it can go wrong in so many different ways. And you have to be very precise at how you disperse it, I guess. Then we jump to current times and we're following Caroline. Is that her name? Sorry, I'm looking down at my phone. Yes, Caroline. She, something happened with between her and her fiance. She ends up going on like their, their honeymoon, I think by herself. And she takes like this little tour of something and she finds an apothecary jar. It's a very specific jar and it has like a name on it, like a label of like the apothecary store. So she becomes fascinated with it. She is some sort of historian, I believe. Um, so she starts to kind of dive into the story behind this bottle 
And so then, then we start, you know, we keep flip-flopping back and forth between Eliza and Nella and their story and Caroline and how, you know, how she's pulling up their story. It was all just very fascinating. It had a, a, like, just like magical realism to it. And I, I was just drawn in. And I loved how the story, Caroline's story mixed in with um, Nella and Eliza's story. It was, like I said, it was just all fascinating. If you haven't read this, you need to pick it up. <laughs> then we have a cozy mystery. This is Arsenic and Adobe by Mia Man Manansala. Um, this is the first book in the cozy mystery series called A Tita Rosie's Kitchen Mystery. I'm looking forward to the second book. I had so much fun with this story. It reminded me how much I really do love a good cozy mystery every now and then. Um, the I listened to this on audio, read, like read along with it, and oh my gosh, I highly recommend the audio. It is fantastic, fantastically done. Um, the her her aunts are so fun and funny. It, it just it just made the story. Lila Macapacal Macapacal. <laughs> That's the side character's name. Um, she just can't seem to keep from getting in trouble. So she comes back home to get over a breakup. She is a cook. And she's also there to help her her aunt um, in her restaurant. Because her restaurant is in trouble. Uh, so while she's there in the beginning. All this happens in the beginning. Um, her, like one of her exes walks in. And he's he's like a, like a really big ass. And um, so she's, she has to serve him like her dishes and he's like a food critic of some sort. Well, he ends up like just dying on the table um, as, as Lilla is serving him. So of course she becomes a suspect because she is like an ex-girlfriend that, you know, ends up like really not liking this guy. And, you know, so of course the cops are going to look into her and, you know, suspect her. So it's basically like just her journey of, you know, proving them wrong, like she didn't do it. Um, but there was such a fun twist to this story that I just adored. Um, I, I just adored the whole, just the whole aspect of everything. The ants were f so much fun. Lilla was so much fun. Her friends were fun. Um, yeah, and that twist was just, just, it was just crazy, and it really just did it for me. So, if you haven't read or listened to this book, I highly recommend the audio. Uh, get on board. It's, it's so much fun. My most surprising book of 2021 is Later by Stephen King. Me and the King don't usually get along. But I really had a good time with this book. It's it's more on the shorter side, which maybe I think kind of uh, helped me. Um, so it wasn't as drawn out as a lot of his stories can be. But it was it was really fascinating. Uh, so we're following um, Jamie Conklin. I'm looking at my notes again, once again. Um, he takes us back to his childhood. Uh, and, and lets us know, tells his story of how it is or how he felt as a child and then growing up to, to be able to see and talk to dead people. I really liked um, a part in the book where it said, I, I put this in my Goodreads, it's not like in that movie with Bruce Willis. It can be interesting. It can be scary sometimes. It can be a pain in my ass, but mostly it just is. Um, so yeah, so basically, you know, it, Growing up, he just kind of learned to deal with it, and we we get to see or read about different scenarios um, that happened through his childhood. It's really hard to talk about this book without giving anything away because I mean the main focus is on Jamie and his ability and how it affected his life growing up, how it in current times is affecting his life, and then like the ending was just like a WTF moment that it just just brought this book like like i was just like yes king yes this this is what i want to read the audio was amazing as well so i highly recommend if you haven't picked up this is like one of his latest books if you haven't picked it up you're 
if, if you're not, if you're kind of like me and you're, you're not necessarily, I'm not, I'm a King fan. I appreciate his, his work. But it just it it's a it's always a hit or miss for me with with Mr. King. Um, so if you're kind of like that, like I am, pick this up. It is so much fun. I think you would like it. So that's it, y'all. That's all my surprising reads for 2021. Just just a couple genres that I'm not usually into. Plus, you know, the Stephen King was so fascinating. The cozy mystery was just so much fun. Um, so, so many good fantasies happening here. Uh, I had a really good time with these books. Um, so yeah, so let me know in the comments down below what, what, what books were surprising, so were surprisingly good to you in 2021. Let me know. Maybe I can get some recommendations down there. So as always, thank y'all so much for watching. I uh, hope you're all doing well out there. Hugs from me all around y'all, and I will see y'all very soon with another video. Bye y'all.